uh, as vaibhav said i think technology sometimes is addicting i mean you know when we didn't have uh, calculators or phones we really remembered all the telephone numbers of our, our friends and all the tables right from 2 to 30 but as we got calculators we all forgot we have forgotten the tables and we don't even remember our residential phone number now because the mobile phone has taken over so technology actually is fascinating and you fall in love with it and it becomes addicting also so let's see what is the role of ct based robotics in the replacement all of us know it isn't quite easy uh, to get it right in conventional TKR. Sometimes due to osteoporosis, your intramedullary jig can walk into virus or valgus or even flexion and extension. The tibial slope is very difficult to get sometimes because of the fat patient having a thick soft tissue envelope. In conventional TKR, the alignment and balancing is completely based on human judgment and alignment is possible only in coronal plane. In navigation-based TKR, Surgeons feed information for creation of a 3D model intraoperatively. Human error in capturing the information can lead to multiplication of mistake. Especially when I was navigating, I used to find it difficult to get the medial epicondyle quite right. And that's why the rotation of the femur sometimes used to be wrong. I mean, the, the, robot, the navigation would suggest a different rotation than what I would feel. In CT-based robotic TKR, a 3D bone model is created by the CT scan. CT scans are more accurate and consistent results are obtained as compared to the other two techniques. And you can design a customized approach to the patient's anatomy. Unlike conventional TKR, the CT-based TKR enable alignment in all three planes, that is coronal, sagittal, and axial. Now let's see what is the role of that. Whenever we do a conventional TKR, we align our rotational jig to the posterior condor axis. But from the CT scans, it was observed that there isn't any consistent correlation between the posterior condor axis and trans epicondyl axis. We always presume it is 3 degree, but the range varied from 2 degrees of internal rotation to 7 degrees of external rotation irrespective whether the patient had a virus or a valgus deformity. If you don't align your implant to the epicondyl axis, you will lead to patellofemoral problems later on. Accurate rotational alignment can lead to shape matching of the implant to the patient's anatomy. What will happen is the trochlea of the implant when it is parallel to the trochlea of the patient, you get better patellofemoral biomechanics. At the same time, when the posterior condor offset of the implant is same as the patient's posterior condor offset, you will get better flexion and better contact in the flexion. In a CT-based TKR, one major advantage is the registration points are all easily accessible. They are all anterior and medial. There is no, there is no point to be taken posteriorly or laterally. So because of that, you don't really require any bone levers and the exposure is quite less. The cuts are done by saw and there is a haptic boundary. So because of the haptic boundary, protection of soft tissue does happen automatically. You need, don't need to use your posterior lever, your PCL as well as the uh, popliteal artery is very well protected. And even if you make an effort, you can't really go in the center. Your saw will not cross this particular boundary. So that is very useful in protecting soft tissues. Also. The implant position is known beforehand. You know where the implant is going to be. You can manipulate the implant, but you would manipulate what? Three to four millimeters. So your uh, pins can be placed reasonably close to the joint through the same incision. And you don't need to have a bigger incision or a separate incision for that. So pins can be quite close to the joint because you know where the implant is going to be. In a CT-based robot, you can use the alignment of the implant for achieving balancing to address medial tightness in flexion and extension, you can anchor the tibia laterally and add varus to open the gap medially, depending on how much varus you would like. I mean, some most surgeons generally are okay with up to three degrees of varus. If you are a kinematic aligner, you may go for a larger varus also. But this basically will reduce the need for soft tissue release. If you have tightness in flexion, if a flexion gap is tight, you can anchor the tibia anteriorly and give a posterior slope to the tibia to get better flexion gap, as you can see here. To open the medial flexion gap, you can anchor the femur laterally and rotate the component externally. As you can see here, when you anchor it laterally, rotate externally, your medial flexion gap is open. If you want to reduce the lateral laxity in flexion, most of our patients, they are sitting cross-legged preoperatively. That's why their lateral gaps are very loose. So if you want to tighten that lateral flexion gap, you can anchor the femur medially and rotate externally. If you want to achieve both, that means open the medial gap and close the lateral gap, you can anchor in the middle and rotate externally. In a conventional TKR, 
we first cut the bone then we size the implant then we cut for that implant then we check the gap and perform soft tissue release in a robotic uh, ct based robotic pkr you do virtual planning you do virtual ligament balancing before doing the bone cuts you know what is the effect of that bone cut on the gap as well as the alignment and once you are happy with the alignment and balancing virtually then you proceed with bone resection and then you do trialing uh, in a tkr we are actually a lot of variables we are juggling together alignment flexion gap extension gap mid flexion gap patellar femoral overstuffing or notching the joint line reproduction sometimes component overhang or even a defect and it does happen that we get the gap right but there is a patellar femoral overstuffing or there is an anterior notching so in order to balance all these gaps the ct based TK, uh, tkrs are better because you know beforehand the effect of that bone cut for example in a conventional tkr sometimes you do a distal femoral cut after that you put the sizer jig and you realize the femur is smaller than the smallest size available and you will have to have a patellar femoral overstuffing in this case you can't take the femur posteriorly because you are committed to an extension gap by doing a distal femoral cut but in a ct based robot you would know it before you know that over here there is going to be a patellar femoral overstuffing so you can take the femur posteriorly but this in effect will tighten the flexion gap and you don't want that so you take the femur distally when you take that even the extension gap becomes equally tight and then you take the tibia distally to balance both the gaps so this juggling is possible in a ct based robotic tkr in this tkr what you see is what you get whatever is the computer screen showing the implant in all three planes that is what your post operative x ray looks now let's see couple of cases uh, this particular patient had a large defect on the posterior lateral side on the femur it's impossible to put any jig by reference to the posterior decorder axis in this particular case but you can go by the transepicolder axis you know before and how much is going to be the defect and you can probably reduce the defect by posterizing the femur you can reduce the defect to from 8.5 to uh, say 6.5 and then so this is what you would get post operatively if you there was a patient with 26 degree valgus and previous patellectomy most of these patients are quite loose in extension and you can see here that if one had gone conventionally he would have resected 8 mm distal femur but before hand we knew that the extension gap was loose so the distal femur resection was much less as compared to normal the, if you have a stress fracture you would do an intramedullary reaming first to get the rod into the medullary canal and cut at 90 degrees to it but here you can cut at 90 degrees and just drop the rod in inside that particular uh, rod will go in the center and tibia will be base spread will be along the cut without any defect this was an interesting case where because of the previous hto there was a huge posterior slope now you can't reproduce this slope if you don't reproduce your flexion gap is going to be tight and if you cut like a normal slope you will remove a lot of bone anteriorly on the tibia and your extension gap will be loose so if you want to balance both the gaps you can manipulate the implant's positioning here you can see that the distal femoral resection was less and the posterior femoral resection was high by doing that both the gaps became equal and one can go for a cruciate retaining knee as well now partial knee with a ct based robotic tkr are probably much simpler than doing conventionally as you can see here that when we are doing a uh, tibial cut with a saw in a conventional partial knee you are quite scared where you will undermine the island of the acl you when it is done robotically that island is preserved very well and you know the position of the implant that there is no overhang medially and there is a good overlap of femur and tibia throughout the range of motion so that really makes the job easy so in a partial knee i think probably the surgery itself is less stressful when you do robotic so basically ct based robotic tkr allow alignment in all three planes coronal sagittal and axial the execution of planning is more accurate and it is consistent every time the registration points are easily accessible the predominantly anterior and medial and exposure required is very minimum all the cuts are saw based hence they are quick accurate with no bone dust haptic boundary protects the soft tissues when you are doing the cuts alignment also helps in balancing alignment and balancing both are very accurate virtual implant planning and positioning and virtual ligament balancing is possible before doing any bone resection and this ensures 
minimal soft tissue release and reducing post operative inflammatory pain and better functional outcome thank you